Richard, the question of free will is a deep probe of what the brain and mind are doing. And there are many theories about this. As you see the distinction between physical states of the brain and mental states of the mind or our consciousness, how do you deal with free will? I think we have free will in the sense that uh, it is up to us what we do when we perform intentional actions, that is to say, when we do something meaning do it. But let me put a lot of qualifications on this. First, so much of our action in life is habitual. We do what we did last time, we have dinner at the same places, we, we walk along the same streets, we don't, we're not making decisions all the time. But we have it in our power to do so, should we wish. So the role of our intentions, which I'll use as the word for us <laughs> deciding and putting into effect our decisions. So the role of our intentions is just operative from time to time. We direct our body, as it were, to walk along the street and then the body takes over. But uh, free will is a matter of us being able to change direction from time to time. Now, a second sort of qualification, uh, if we see that something is the best action to do and we have no temptation to do it, we will automatically do it because uh, we are rational creatures and we see that doing a good, something being good is a reason for doing it and something being the best thing to do is an overwhelming reason for doing it. And uh, for example, if I'm not short of money and somebody is starving and it's so obviously a good thing that I shall give them money, uh, the issue of choosing to give them money doesn't, doesn't come in. Secondly, when there aren't any moral issues and I uh, want, I desire, I feel an inclination to do this action rather than that action, I'll do this action rather than that action. If I uh, like Chinese food and don't like Indian food and I'm offered the alternative, there aren't any moral issues, I choose the Chinese food. So we, are, we make our choices in the light of our moral beliefs and in the light of our desires. And uh, uh, they act automatically except when there is a conflict. Now, there may be conflicts, there may be two actions which we recognize as equal best actions to do. Uh, and then we have to choose between them. Shall I give to this charity or that charity? They're equally good, I've got to make a decision. Or we've got to choose between two items on the menu, no moral issues, I like them equally well. How shall I choose? I've got to interfere, as it were, with the processes which are carrying me on in a normal way. And above all, I have to interfere when there is a conflict between what I see as the best thing to do and what I want to do. And that is, of course, the all-important conflicts in our lives. Shall I give the money to the charity when I'm hard up? Uh, shall I tell the truth when it will leave me losing the job, and so on. These, we all know these conflicts between what we want to do most and what we feel we, is the best thing to do. And in those cases, I believe we are subject to contrary inclinations, inclinations arising from our natural desires, inclinations from our recognizing the goodness of things. And it's in those cases that we exercise free will. And yet, a further qualification, these inclinations are inclinations. That is to say, we are subject to pressures in one direction rather than another. And sometimes the pressures are rather stronger than in one direction rather than another. I think it would be the best thing to do, but I'm not very convinced. And I want to do this very much. So there's a big temptation to do this. Likewise, in some cases, temptations may be small. So... Free will is, as I see it, a matter of us being able to choose between the inclinations and desires which come to us when there's a need to choose, which there often isn't. Otherwise, the desires take over, we live the habitual lives. But I think we have that. That is what I think it consists in, and that's why we are rightly, I believe, held morally responsible for our actions. Insofar as we are doing what we believe to be right, then we can be thought praiseworthy for it. Insofar as we're doing what we believe to be wrong, then we are blameworthy. I think people can't be blamed for doing what is wrong if they don't believe it wrong. So, 
Uh, but of course, most people have somewhat similar beliefs in, at any rate, in the obvious cases about what is wrong and right, and therefore they can be blamed for doing what is wrong because they usually believe it to be. And we are rightly blamed or praised in, for these circumstances because it really is, I suggest, up to us which desires, which beliefs we act on. So I think free will operates in a, a very limited but a very crucial area, and that's why we can be held praise or blame. That's my view about what it consists in.